Good evening, everyone. I'm going to start with the most important group of individuals in this place right now. The parents, please give yourselves a round of applause because it's not the seniors. Hey, look, I'm, I'm both. I, I, I think if I had said this before becoming a parent of twin sons, I would have started with the senior class. But now that I know what it is like to drive my sons to and from multiple places, repeatedly doing homework assignments, reading Curious George until I'm blue in the face, parent-teacher conference meetings in the daytime, followed by a performance I didn't know that they had in the evening, <laughs> followed by countless hours of phone calls to babysitters to ensure that we could get them to and from soccer practice. So from one parent to another, thank you for your commitment. To the second most important group, you seniors have poured into me in a way that will, you'll never know the full magnitude of it. So I thank you for our conversation last night. To Doug, to Bob, to Gary, to Victoria who picked me up in everything but her Harley Davidson, I thank you. Two weeks ago, I felt a breeze similar to this, but it was about 90 degrees as I sat on a hillside looking at a marble collection of pillars that seemed to hold up the sky. I was standing at the base of the Parthenon. It was a moment inspired by my seventh grade ancient history teacher, Miss Snowden. It was a moment that required that I wake up to the possibility of moving from a worn torn history book to physically standing in this phenomenal space. Just about a week prior to that, I was taking my sons to school. Marshall was leading the way. Aiden decided he was going to wait until I finished locking the door, I turned around, I saw him waiting, held hands, kissed the back of his hand, looked him in his face, said, I love you. We shared a glance and then made our way down the hallway. That too was a moment, but that was inspired by my father's words prior to him passing away from cancer, when he simply said, you will be stronger and wiser than I. But I needed to wake up to the full potential of who I am and what I have to offer. Just about three days prior to that kiss and handhold moment, I was standing in a queue at Beijing International Airport, just completing my Operation Smile mission, my fourth consecutive mission, and I was thinking back on the cacophony of sounds, which you need to understand is my role, one of my roles in Op Smile is that of a student sponsor. So I get to take two brilliant high school students somewhere across the world. Their parents entrust them to me. I don't know why. And we get to experience a change that is indescribable. To see a child that does not speak your native tongue and you don't speak theirs, take it away from a parent's arms, reaching back and disappearing behind still closing doors, with tears and cries is unimaginable. But to see within about two hours what that contribution of $240 does when that child wakes up and is handed a mirror and wakes up to the reality that life is different and new. Maybe about 10 years prior to that, one of my favorite movies is The Wizard of Oz. I saw it in a very different way. What I made up, because I know it's about political allegory, so please don't send me any emails about my interpretation of The Wizard of Oz. But what I saw was, I'm Dorothy. And that the munchkins represent the moments where I decide to play myself small and insignificant. And the scarecrow represents the moments where I dumb myself down intellectually. And the tin man represents my inability on occasions to choose to connect and love and to serve, and then the cowardly lion to stand firm in the gifts and the talents and the skills that I've been given. And it goes on, but what I love most about it is that there are three things that we can take from that story. 
One, there's always going to be some kind of an event. This is an event. Every single person here is graduating from something and to something. I don't know, you know, this is the digital age now, and I'm, you know, I got all the latest gadgets. But I still like some of the old school stuff. You remember when you got the sheet of paper that said, if you like me, check yes? Or, okay, that's an event. They don't really do this much now, parties. This is all, I'm telling my, I'm 44, I'm telling my age. But y'all, some of y'all know, back in the day where the girls were on one side and the boys were on the other, and you waited five, six, 15 songs till somebody got the nerve to walk up and go across to the other, that's an event. Every single day, every single moment, there is some event that we will experience. But you need to know this, that events just are what they are. We give them interpretations, and then those interpretations become the meaning of those events. And from the events, the second thing we can get are choices. Let me make this real simple. At every moment, what an awesome choice we have to either make a contribution from love or to make one from fear. There's an event that will prompt a choice. The choice you make will be from a space of love or from a space of fear, but it depends on the interpretation that you give to the event. Let me go back to the story. Remember Dorothy in the beginning of the story? It was gray and dismal. And maybe you remember the part where she got fed up just like Mrs. Gulch, who ultimately played the Wicked Witch, got fed up with Total running through her yard, put Total in the basket, and then what did Dorothy do? She wanted to run away from that event, scathed by it. I'm not loved, nobody likes me, no one cares for me, woe is me, victim. She made up a faulty interpretation about that event that had her make a choice from fear, which had her run away from the responsibility of being in relationship. Simply put, she produced the third thing we can get from that story, which is a result. All too often, someone asked me yesterday, where are you, baby? What's something that you want seniors, people our age to know? Where are you? Yes. So here's something else I want you to know. If I didn't say this yesterday, your results do not define you. It's just feedback that lets you know how you're doing relative to your goal, or in our case, your vision. It's neither positive or negative. That's the interpretation we give to it. So as you continue to journey and you take a look at your feedback, if you get an F, it doesn't define who you are. It just lets you know maybe you didn't integrate the information, didn't understand it. Maybe you studied page 60 and the test was on page 62. It's simply feedback. There's always going to be an event. We'll always be prompted to make a choice. And the choice we make will always provide us with some result. So to the parents, here's my life challenge to you. Continue to look at one another in your homes, close-knit and extended. Continue to see the gifts. And what I mean by gifts are talents, skills, and abilities. Because all too often, I run into people who allow life to just be a little regular and commonplace. And when we do that, we give our children permission to create status quo as their reality. And in many cases, what they do is they take on Dorothy in the beginning of the story, and life is dismal and gray, and they wonder where their next paycheck is going to come from, rather than shifting their focus to the individual they can serve in this moment. You serve as the model until you are in the ground, and after that, then your message lives on through your legacy to the faculty. And I wish I had the opportunity to meet you all, but you know what I love about it? I met them, so I met you. I get the moments where you struggle. I understand as an educator, my mother's a 24-year vet veteran in DC public schools. I know the sacrifices that you put in, but what I want you to take a look at is, that's you. This class graduates on and a new class comes in. It's a new opportunity for you to check your talents, your skills, your abilities. Make it something simple. I started taking Latin ballroom dancing just to switch things up. Amazing how I began to incorporate those lessons into my trainings naturally. So the more you take a look at you and you continue to commune with one another and challenge and stretch, the more you're able to give to the next class that comes through. To my seniors, simply put, wake up to the truth of who you are. 
Wake up to your talents. Wake up to the love that's inside of you. Wake up to the love that's around you. Let me pull from what Mike said. Wake up to your passion. He also told y'all to wake up, in his own words, to your talents, and then tap into that innate leadership ability that seeks to understand and then be understood. Wake up to the world that's around you. Wake up to your opportunities. Wake up to the messages embedded in the things that you call failure. Can y'all hear the alarm? It's real simple. Wake up. 